Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to talk about five things I wish I knew as a swimmer. If you're new to the channel, you're probably swimming right now because it's summer and the weather's hot and you're probably uh, experiencing some frustration and well I'm here to say that yeah it's it's totally normal because it is high season a lot of people are trying to swim for the first time probably fortunately two weeks three weeks from now the season's going to change and with that uh, comes low seasons so yeah hang in there stick with it and eventually most of that crowd that you see at your pool or at the beaches will slowly die down. It will slowly get quieter and quieter. Look forward to that. I'm gonna give you five things that I wish I knew before I started swimming. Now, these five things that I wrote down here are very interesting because if you were to tell me these five things like 30 years ago to me when I started out swimming, because I started off you know, like, like as a toddler, right, as a kid, if you told me these five things now and I didn't know how to swim, I would be pretty surprised or shocked because, you know, this, this, these five things that I came up with are very, uh, very, very unusual. So hear me out, okay? So first thing that I wish I knew before I started swimming is that swimming is a blind sport, actually. When you think about it, when you're doing your front crawl, when you're doing your breaststroke, when you're doing butterfly, whatever stroke that you're doing, when you're doing laps at your pool, essentially you're either looking down or you're looking up. Now compare swimming to other activities like riding a bike or running, playing football, playing tennis. All of these activities require you looking forwards. We can't do this as we swim because as you can see, it doesn't really work <laughs> in terms of <laughs> working with the water. Instead, we have to tilt our head down and we have to act like we are like a human torpedo in the water in order to swim more efficiently. So most of the times as I'm swimming, you know, I, I rarely look up, you know. The odd occasion we look up, for example, when we're doing breaststroke, maybe when we're doing like a flip turn, but most of the times, when you're swimming your laps, when you're in that lap mode, and you're doing hundreds and hundreds of laps back and forth, you're looking down, and you get a really good visual of what the bottom of your pool looks like. What's dangerous or what's scary about this is that if you threw something in front of us, and you know, if within a few seconds, we wouldn't be able to catch it, you know, until it's too late, we'll slam into it. So that's, that's the fun fact about swimming because, uh, you know, most beginners, they will do the doggy paddle. And why? It's because they, they want to trust in their eyesight to see where they're going. But later on, eventually when you evolve, you have to get rid of that and yeah, just trust yourself. Look at the indicators at the bottom of the pool and just swim looking downwards most of the time. Swimming is technically a blind sport <laughs> when you think about it. A second thing that I wish I knew before I started swimming was that you can't fight the water. Now I see this all the time with my clients. I see this all the time with new swimmers. I see this, you know, no matter what kind of age, background, or what kind of body shape you have, you can't treat the water like a dumbbell. You know, like when you go to the gym, you can crank out your sets with a dumbbell as hard as you can. You can rip that barbell, that kettlebell, or you know, more oomph, the more, uh, the more reward you get back to your muscles. But it doesn't work that way with water. The more you fight the water, the more the water will win, <laughs> actually. And when the water wins, that's when you drown. If you really want to be a good swimmer, you have to learn how to work with the water. So for example, when you're treading water, you're not fighting the water. You know, you're moving your hands like this, you're moving your legs like this, we call it egg beater. And we do this is because we want to work with the water in order to keep ourselves floating above the, the water surface. So I want you to really, you know, drill this into your head. You know, the more oof you put into your strokes, for example, you know, you're going more into sprint swimming territory, which is fine, but be careful because you, you can't, it's just like sprinting, you know, on dry land. You, you can only keep that up for such a short period of time until, you know, the lactic acid builds up and then 
you, the body gives in and it's, it becomes too difficult. If you want to swim long term, like most long to lap swimmers do, you have to loosen up. You really have to, like I said, like you notice they look like zombies in the water. They do that for a reason. The more lax they are with their body, their arms, their legs, when they kick, when they move, the less chances of that lactic acid building up, and the more they can prolong it. Right? They're working with the water. Let the water carry them from side to side instead of them <clears throat> huffing and oofing it there. Can't fight the water. You can only work with the water in order to become a great swimmer. Third thing that I wish I knew before I started swimming is that swimming is easy, but people are difficult. Now, if you've been swimming for a long time, you'll know what I mean in, in this statement. Swimming, when you think about it, when, you, when you're doing your front crawl, your breaststroke, when you're doing your laps at the pool, if you eliminate all the external variables other than you and the water, swimming is pretty easy. It's like driving a car. You know, when you drive a car and you learn how to drive, you know, in the beginning stages, it's difficult, right? You got to get rid, get, you know, used to, you know, being confined in a car and moving your arms and legs. Yeah. yeah, coordination, right? Yeah, but when you get past that, once you learn how to drive, it becomes really easy, actually, you know? I mean, it's very, anybody can learn how to drive, right? You don't really need a, like, physical, like, requirement or, you know, you just need to, you know, spend time doing it. But what makes driving hard is driving with other people. And this is the thing with swimming as well. When you're swimming with other people that are sharing your lane and are doing some really nasty things to you as you swim, the same thing applies to you like whether you're in traffic or the pool. There are people that will tailgate you. There, there will be people that don't know which lane they are in. There are people that are doing uh, dangerous things, you know, next to you. For example, like diving, like when they shouldn't be diving because they could spear you. Or there's kids playing in your lane or somebody, you know, it, there's all of these, these variables uh, that I've encountered throughout my lifetime of swimming. And these obstacles ju are just like driving on a highway full of cars. Most of the time, you're not really you know, worried about your driving, you're worried about other people's driving. Because one little hit, one little accident, and then, you know, it's over, right? Your swimming session's over. Your, your driving is over, right? You gotta stop. And I've encountered a lot of people that didn't know what they were doing. And when I have a, a lane all to myself and there's no one swimming with me, I can just totally be free. I can just swim for hours and really not think about anything and just zone out and just, yeah, just be free. However, the second a new swimmer enters my lane and shares the lane with me, my mind is constantly thinking about that other swimmer. Like, I have to monitor, in a way, that other swimmer, like babysit that other swimmer more than I can, you know, focus on my swimming. So, you see my attention starts to split and more and more of this attention is focused on this other swimmer. I pay attention to what stroke they're doing, how fast they are going, what kind of a, you know, swimmer is this? Is this, you know, like a beginner and, or intermediate or advanced? All these variables that I have to consider because there will come a point where I have to decide, okay, should I keep swimming and sharing this lane with this guy or is this guy becoming a hazard so much so that I have to get out of this lane and choose another lane to swim in? Most of the times, it's me leaving that lane in, in choice of a, a better, more suitable lane where, you know, there won't be any incidents or accidents or just, yeah, things that are just going to mess up your swimming session. At the end of the day, swimming is really easy when you think about it. It's just like you, if you've know how to drive and you were given an empty highway to drive for hours, you would have no problem whatsoever. However, if that highway is loaded with all sorts of traffic, all types of vehicles, all kinds of drivers that don't know what they're doing or they're going to mess up your driving, same thing goes with swimming. It will mess up your swimming session every time. Fourth thing that I wish I knew before I started swimming is that pools are not really laser focused. 
And what I mean by laser focused is a pool is not like a gym. You know, when you think of a gym, you have all these types of disciplines. So for example, powerlifters, bodybuilders, uh, HIT, calisthenics, uh, athletes, you know, all these types of you know, disciplines, but they are all in one, focused in one direction, right? They, they are there at the gym to work out and get a pump and get fit, right? Not everyone that enters a pool is there on the same mission as you. What you're gonna run into are people that view the pool like an entertainment or a source of escape. So for example, you know, you'll see swimmers like me swimming laps in a lane and in complete or stark contrast, you'll see it's like someone like sleeping in a hot tub or chatting in a sauna or playing with their kids in the shallow end. When you think about it, pools are not like gyms. Pools are more like shopping malls, you know? It's just like a shopping mall underwater. You'll encounter all sorts of people at the shopping mall. You'll meet all types of swimmers or people that go to your pool, you know? And most of them aren't even swimmers. They're just there to just, you know, make use of the sauna or the whirlpool or the jacuzzi or the steam room or just to lounge around and chat with their friends. I mean, that's, that's totally normal. You're sharing this environment with a whole bunch of people that aren't really laser focused or focused on one goal, okay? Your goal or my goal may be to get fit by going to the pool, working out, but someone to someone else, a pool is just, oh, thank God, I can just relax in this hot tub, soak up this hot water and just chit chat with my neighbors. And you would never see this activity at your gym, would you? You wouldn't see a family playing around with dumbbells or like seniors like sleeping at, at, at a bench or chatting or making, playing chess or something, right? Sometimes, yeah, it's, it's fun to have that kind of diversity and sometimes you really want to be in an environment where everyone is laser focused. Like everyone is doing the same thing. Like we, are, we know what we're doing. We're here to do laps, you know, get fit and get out <laughs> as fast as possible. And the fifth and final thing I wish I knew before I started swimming is that oceans and pools are not the same thing. <laughs> if you swim in an ocean, if you swim in a lake, if you swim in a pool, you know what I'm talking about. The pools are actually a simulation of swimming, in my opinion. They control the temperature, they control the, the chlorine levels, the pool water is clear so you can see everything. However, when you go to the ocean, you go to the lake, swim in a river, wherever you go swimming outdoors, you'll notice that the water is muddy, the water is salty, there are debris and obstacles in the water that you cannot see or will, you will encounter or adapt to chops, like these waves rushing in on you in certain angles. You gotta pay attention to seals, jellyfish, seaweed, logs, uh, yachts, boats, uh, jet skis, other swimmers probably. I mean, the list goes on. If swimming in a pool is a blind sport, swimming in an ocean is like, like a completely blind sport. Like it's like you closing your eyes and just seeing darkness. And I know what you're saying. Like, oh, I, I you know, when you swim in open water, you look up. Yeah. You, you do, you have to adapt your technique to, to handle all of these different variables when you're swimming in open water. I get it, yeah, I, I have swam in open water. It is a beast, swimming outdoors. I would compare it to like driving off road. You know, like when you're so used to driving in the city or the highway, you know, there's all these rules and you know, smooth pavement. You don't have to worry about like variables like bumps or logs or bears or trees or you know freezing cold weather or being stuck in the mud all those rules go out the window same thing applies to open water swimming i mean the only way i see that anyone can like continue to do it long term is by swimming with a partner or having somebody in a rowboat monitor your your open water swimming and you know you'll notice that you see you you watch YouTube clips of people out there saying they always have like a partner and that partner is there to, you know, watch their back because if something 
goes wrong and you're in the middle of the ocean and I don't know, you get stung by a jellyfish, who's going to be there to, you know, save you or rescue you? Swimming outdoors is like, like really dangerous in my opinion compared to swimming in a pool, you know, because at least in a pool you have lifeguards that are constantly monitoring you, right, making sure that you're safe, making sure everyone else is safe. But outdoors, yeah, you're on your own. Like once you go, you know, once you venture past all the people and all the lifeguards at the beach or anyone else that's, that can see you, you're on your own. And I don't, I don't care if you're wearing a wetsuit or you have a swim boy attached to you, you know, one, one slight accident and it's over. So be very careful if you choose to pursue outdoor or open water swimming because it's not the same thing. It is not the same thing as pool swimming, you know. You know, once once you uh, experience open water swimming, you will be very thankful that there is pool swimming. You know, you can go back to that environment and say, oh, this is a walk in the park. <laughs> so these are my five things that you know I wish I knew before I started swimming. And I'd like to hear from you. Leave a comment down below if you've been swimming for a while or you know, you know how to swim. Let us know what are some things that you wish you knew before you started the sport and it can help us all open our eyes. If you really want to learn how to swim, guess what? I have an online course that teaches you how to swim. It's called 7dayswim.co. Click the link down below. Thousands of people have enrolled and can now successfully swim. So save your time, save your money, you know, you don't have to take swimming lessons. You can learn this on your own, like I did, by taking this online course. So click the link below and it gets you instant access when you sign up. And if you don't have the money, then you can join our private Facebook group. Link is down below where you can ask questions about swimming or post your videos so we can give you feedback. And it's all completely free. So you have enough tools under your belt to get started. What are you waiting for? Do it now. And if you haven't, subscribe to this YouTube channel, like this video, hit that bell. Bing! And I will see you in the next video. Bye bye!